Alright guys, so you did your one minute timing. How did everybody do? Okay. Yeah. So practice makes perfect. Just keep running through them. Before I studied for my BCBA exam, I was literally, every free moment that I had, if I was driving with somebody else in the car, I had my SAF meds out, I was running through them. If I went to the gym, I was on the treadmill, I was flipping through my SAF med cards. <laughs> like, every opportunity. It seems silly, but I mean, that's the, really the way that you master all of those terms and concepts. Um, so every every moment you can, take advantage of it. All right. And you know what, too? There's been studies done mm. that when it comes to memorization wrote like this, mm. that if you're moving while you try and memorize, it's quicker. Your oh, whole body and as well, and this works too, I've tested it, bathing, sitting in a bathtub and absorbing the water to you. I swear to you, it works. Try it, you guys. I'm no, not I joking. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. It works. It works. Really? Yes. And, and like you're saying, jogging <laughs> or walking or doing something else, it's just, it takes in the whole, all of the body, all of the, yep, the senses, it's been proven, you can look it That's up, it cool. really works, the bath works, and so I got through college, truthfully, and the walking, the jogging, the baroque memorization, the idea of being check it out, it really bath. helps, and just yeah. sitting still, I mean, it still works, but this is a little more effective. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, that's some great advice. We'll have to look into some research articles, maybe I'll find one and print it out for you guys. All right, so let's get a, let's get started. I'm gonna um, briefly go over the programs. They're all different this time. Um, the data sheets are much more simple. Okay, these are your basic basic data sheets. Um, so hopefully that'll minimize some questions. Um, we're still gonna use least to most prompting on all of our um, programs, and plus or minus. Don't worry about um, the P plus. The P plus, <laughs> yeah, um, or any other partial prompting. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let me go over these quickly. Um, I did object ID twice. Once in um, expressive, and then once receptively. However. After reading this program, it's actually, um, it says picture. So technically, it could be object ID, but it's also picture ID, really, okay? So just keep that in mind as you're doing it. Um, but, so this program that says object ID expressive, really picture ID expressive, since it's expressive, I've got my first set here is ball, cup, and car. So my procedure is sit next to or across from the child. SD. What should my SD be if this is an expressive program for picture ID for ball, cup, or car? What's this? Perfect. All right. And then what would the response be that I'm looking for my lear learner? Exactly. Okay. Now I have a few different pictures in here. Can anybody tell me why I did that? Exactly. Okay. It's called training with multiple exemplars. Um, I know that's a zip. Sorry. Um, but that's the technical name for it. Um, and like we said, training for generality so that I know that this is a cup, and then I also know that this is a cup, okay? Um, if you were to walk into a program, into a program that I really put together for a kiddo, I would probably have at least three or four different um, options for each picture instead of just two, but unfortunately I don't have that many resources at the office, so we're making do, and this is a ball. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you've got this one. Wonderful. Um, you can read through the error correction procedure, um, but you'll use that verbal prompt again. <clears throat> uh, well, you'll give your SD and then you literally provide the verbal model that you're looking for, right? Okay. So the opposite program. Now we're going to do receptive. And this is object ID. So I've got my objects here. 
again, there's multiple exemplars. Okay, there's a few cars, a few balls, a few cups. So what are, what am I going to do with this program? What do you guys think? Instead of what would my program setup look like? You know, Remember, this is receptive. You know the objects out in front of you, and you'd say touch ball or point to ball or Perfect. whatever the objects are. Exactly. Okay. So you can say touch, um, give me the, right? I could really start training, teaching loosely, um, varying my SDs. Um, but right, all of the objects are going to be out and you're going to pinpoint exactly which one. Um, and so remember, again, you're going to be using your random uh, rotation data sheet for this. So when you put those three in, you know, you're going to have to choose exactly which letter you're on, which stimuli matches that. Okay, great. You're going to love these guys. This data sheet, or, or this um, program sheet, is going to look a little bit different from the others, but I just wanted to give you a third example of another type. Um, it's a little bit more complex in that it it's, gives you the variety of correct responses the learner could do, some examples of incorrect responses and no responses. So again, remember, we're just for our sake, plus or minus. <clears throat> um, and this program is called Expressive Community Helpers. So you're literally going to show an individual a picture or put the card in front of them, and you're going to say, what would be your SD? Remember, it's expressive. Who? Yeah. Who's this? What is it? Any of those, okay? And then they should just say fireman, doctor, or police officer. Good. Um, so those three, you're going to take data using your random rotation data sheets, okay? Um, these three, I'm going to have you take data using kind of a mass trial format type sheet um, because, as I said, I want you to all use the same data sheet, okay? So you're not going to take off with these. You're not going to carry them around with you. Everyone should just take turns inputting um, their data following suit, one after the other, okay? So, that is the random rotation, you got it. Um, so, I put in here an example of the program. So, 8 1, my initials would go here, or your initials, okay? Mm -hmm. And then it says, this is gross motor imitation, and my set list. So right, my program, I'm going back to my set name right here, my set list, and it says date introduced, 8-1, tap table, clap hands, shrug shoulders. So I wrote that in here, okay? Set item slash task, right underneath, tap table, clap hands, shrug shoulders. Prompt level, least to most. And then over here, you're just going to write a plus or a minus, depending on how they did, okay? But remember, in like a true mass trial data sheet, you would actually do like tap table, clap hands, shrug shoulders, right? And you would do all 10. But we're combining them here. And you will see that quite often, all right, when you're in a school setting or something like that because it's just easier to take data on all three. However, remember we talked about cost versus benefit of using a sheet like this, right? Because if a student consistently isn't hitting 80%, you have no way of knowing in here exactly what part of the program they're having trouble with. You know, is, are they, is it not clap hands? Is it, can they shrug their shoulder? Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So there, there's no way to discriminate. But using the um, random rotation trial data sheets, at least that way you can see, all right, consistently, A was tap table and, you know, they got that incorrect. So you can go back and, and teach that or maybe do it in a different way isolate it out, teach it singularly, and then you can really do your mass trial data, right? Okay, this child does not know how to tap table at all, so I'm going to pull it out, I'm going to train that over and over again until they get it, and then I'm going to put it back in. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, 
Again, so I would do this. Next group comes through. Just write the date there again. New initials. Just keep following suit. Okay? So that's first motor imitation. Um, we've got eye contact in response to name. So you're going to say to an individual, um, you're just going to, let's see, I should read it, right? Mm -hmm. Therapist and child sit facing one another. Therapist says the student's name is Gadiel. Therapist says Gadiel waits for a student to make eye contact in response to hearing their name. When Gadiel makes eye contact with the therapist, the therapist should immediately provide verbal praise in, in the form of something like, hi or hey, excitingly and provide a token. Do not say something like nice looking in response to eye contact. Why don't you want to say something like nice looking or nice job making eye contact with me? You want it to be natural. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Because you don't want <laughs> that, that learner to think that's exactly. Yeah. Good. All right. And so there are in here, there's different set levels because when you teach this program, you would first want to start in a really kind of controlled format, right? So you have them at the table, you know, you can teach that really one-on-one -on -one and close. And then you start to generalize out across settings, different people. So this is at table, and you might have a preferred item, you know, that they're gaining access to. Then you have at table with non-preferred item, um, and then not at table. So kind of little by little, fades them out. All right, so that's eye contact and response to me. Um, this one is manned to, in the form of gaining attention and requesting. So I put this in because this is more of a complex procedure. Okay, this is something that you could do incidentally as well, and we'll talk about that during our next session because we're going to get into incidental teaching methods. However, right now I wanted you to practice at the table more in that direct teaching format. All right. So when you're with your partner, choose something. Ask, you know, it's supposed to be something that you like, right? So if I was um, working with an individual, I might do a mini preference assessment, get a toy. I know that they really enjoy. They're all about and excited to play with. It's just totally lighting up early. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, I might bounce the ball, and then I'm going to hide it. And I'm going to wait for them to tap me, and I'm going to say, yeah, what do you want? Ball. Perfect. Here you go. Here's the ball. Right? But this procedure is looking for both. It's looking for the tap to gain your attention and then a request, a mand. So you're going to see that when you read it. I can read it too. Um, example, the therapist and child sit or stand next to one another. Therapist plays with preferred item with back to child. Child taps therapist. Therapist turns and says, what do you want? Child points to the item or says more. Therapist reinforces by giving the item. If child does not guide the child to tap the therapist to gain attention, say, what do you want? And then help the child to either sign more or point to the item, then reinforce by giving the item. Tokens to only be given for independent responses. Verbal praise to be given for following through prompting. Does that make sense? Wouldn't that be best to have somebody assisting you because you really need Yes. Yes. Behind. You can't turn mm -hmm. around and have them tap. Them. It's a very good point. Yeah, because you really do. You need one person to maybe help guide them to tap you. But I have run it by myself too, mm -hmm. where I like literally turn to the side, and you know that they want something. They're grabbing at you, and you just guide them to tap, and then you turn. Oh, hey, what do you want? Ball, or you know, or more. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So again. These three programs, the ones that, those last ones that I went over, you're going to use the um, mass trial type data sheets. Again, just follow suit one under the other. All right. And then we'll use that to do some data um, and graphing afterwards. I think it'll be fantastic. All right. So give me a moment. I'm going to put things out and about around, and we'll split off in groups. Pair yourselves up with the exception of my two couples here who are willing participants, and we'll go from there. Okay. 
All right, so we're going to do A as Fireman. Okay, so the program is expressive. Community. Okay. Trying to have them identify people and such, and oh my god. So A is going to be firefighter. Firefighter. Okay. And then B is going to be. I was just going to go in order, policeman, and then cool. switch it up. Okay. <laughs> so be policeman. And C doc doctor, right? Yeah. Yep. Just making sure I have the right identification of people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, this is expressive. So. Good. So remember, you want to start off by reading the objective. This one, Charlotte will identify in pictures and label four community helpers, i.e. teacher, firefighter, cashier, doctor. And then when shown their picture and asked, who is it? Okay. Materials, pictures of each target item. Ta-da. And implementation procedure. Do you want to read it out loud? Teaching phase. Show Charlotte a picture of the location and give SD who is this. Provide immediate prompts so that the errorless teaching occurs. Systematically fade the prompts given using the prompting hierarchy until three to four consecutive responses are independently given. Testing phase. Show, show Charlotte a picture of the location and give the SD who is this. Use, sequen use the sequence of steps below based upon the response given. Good. So you don't have to worry about the rest. So remember, okay. just use least to most. And error correction procedure is what? Um, if she does the wrong one, try to grab her hand before pointing. Well, well not so grab, but like. Remember, is this expressive or is this receptive? Expressive. Good. So are you going to present all three at once or just one? All three. One. Oh, wait, no. One. Totally, sorry. That's okay. I'm nope. thinking. That's good. Yep, so you're going to present one card, right? And then what's your SD? What's the prompt you're giving? Who is this? Who is this? Good. So she should verbally, what's the response you're looking for? Fireman. Perfect. Say fireman. What's your error correction procedure if she, if she says it incorrectly or if she doesn't say anything at all? I would ask the question again and then give the answer. Perfect. Really fast, right? Yes. So she doesn't have the opportunity. So, or if you hear her pronouncing it wrong or starts to pronounce, like, let's say, I, who is it? And she starts to say, put, I would, like, jump in and say, Fire Man. Exactly. Because yeah. that's what I do in my kid at work, just making sure mm -hmm. that. Nope. So, Perfect. <laughs> yep. So do you want me to model it for you? Yeah. The air correction procedure? <laughs> All right. Sorry. Sorry. You ready? Sorry. No, you're fine. <laughs> ready? So I'm going to just don't say anything at all when I ask you. Yeah. Who's this? Who's this? Fireman. And you say fireman. Fireman. Good. It's fireman. So you want them to respond at the second point when you point out that it's what it is. Like you say fireman and I'm supposed mm -hmm. to repeat. Right. Okay. Now, I want you to accidentally label it something else. You ready? Say policeman when I present it. Who's this? Policeman. Who's this? Fireman. 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 Good. It is a fireman. Hmm. Who's this? Who's this? Doctor. 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 Good. I know it's a little bit creepy, but that's not that, isn't it? Okay? But so did you see? I reprompted, and yeah. then I gave you the verbal model, and then my hope is that you imitate me. Okay. Now, you need, obviously, as a prerequisite to running this program, imitation skills, right? Because if my learner doesn't imitate, then there's no point in doing this. Mm -hmm. So, imitation is key. All right. And they learn fast. Trust me. That's right. All right, ladies. Go to work. Oh, boy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> do you want to be a student or do you want to be, me to be a teacher? Do the teacher first and then I'll just look. So about half by five, we'll swap. Yep. Okay. So do one at a time. Yeah. Should you put it out of order on me? Oh. <laughs> okay. Ready? Who is this? Fireman. Nice job. Who's this? Policeman. Good job! <laughs> Disregard my turn. Who's this? Police. I'm sorry. Who is this? Doctor. Doctor. Nice job. All what right. Considered. 
That would be a minus because okay. I'm the first in a short spot. Oh my god. You'll have to excuse me. Alright. I'm happy. Who's this? Policeman. Who's this? Policeman. Nice job. Who's this? Who's this? Doctor. Doctor. Nice job. <laughs> All right, that's all. Okay. Okay. Who's this? Fireman. Good fireman. Okay. Who's this? Who's this? Policeman. Policeman. Good policeman. Oh, you're right. You too. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's exactly Who's this? Doctor? Good doctor. <laughs> I did that backwards, but that's okay. Okay. <laughs> Who's this? Policeman? Okay, what am I supposed so, to do? So, as I started saying policeman, if you can catch it. Like it's fireman. Who is it? Oh, fireman. Okay. So, we'll do it again. No worries. Okay. Who's this? Po fireman. This is fireman. Fireman. Right? Yep. So, you say, who okay, is good. it? Fireman. Oh, I'm supposed to do Because you want the SD to be connected with the answer. But then how, well, how would you, okay, so you're saying policeman. Mm -hmm. I say, and this is, say, or who is this? Who is this? You want to leave In the, the midst of that. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Scratch, try again. Who's this? Policeman. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Okay, ready? One more time. Okay. Who's this? Policeman. <laughs> too fast. They say it fast, and that's why you have to catch them. Okay. I can't though. My Ready? Struggles. You go. Who is this? Police. Who is it? Fireman. Okay. Fireman. Nice job. That's, so, that's hard though. Because I feel like if they already say it, then you're just kind of like. You gotta stuck. chop. You gotta chop them, and it takes time to practice. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. Last one. One more. Mm -hmm. Who's this? Doctor. Good doctor. You, air, like the airless teaching, it takes a while to pick up on. Like I had a hard time with like one of the students I worked with for a while. I was like, wait, hold on. What do you mean? Like just chop it. Like what do you yeah. mean? And then the more I did, I was like, oh, so like you move with their finger. Or you actually like you yeah. physically kind of do stuff. Mm -hmm. well, and now with the student I work with, with he starts counting like... and starts saying the wrong number. Like I like jump on him and yeah. you go forth. <laughs> it okay. takes time and practice. <laughs> so you guys are good? Yeah, I'm all set. Program picture ID expressive procedure sit next to or across from child SD therapist holds up a picture and says tell me what it is reinforce response and fade prompts when appropriate materials not needed wait we do have materials yeah. okay. okay sorry car cup and ball prompt levels verbal pause partial verbal full verbal Example, the therapist and child sit facing one another. The therapist holds up a picture and says, tell me what it is. If child correctly identifies item, reinforce. If the child does not use least to most verbal prompting, then reinforce. Tokens only to be given for independent responses. Verbal praise to be given for following through with prompting. The same procedure is used across all settings and people. Mastery criteria, the child will correctly identify items independently over three consecutive days. Cool. And you're using your um, random rotation tracking sheet, right? Yes. And so what stimuli do you have for the first set? Ball, cup, or car. Awesome.
So stimuli A is ball, stimuli B is cup, and C is car. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Am I supposed to or keep looking, shuffling through it? Shuffle through, switch it out. Okay. Yep. But you're just going to make sure you do ball first, because that's A, and then your second one is B, cup, okay. and then C, car. Okay. What is this? Ball. Good job. What is this? Hmm. What is this? Cup. Cup. Good job. Perfect air correction procedure. What is this? Boom. What is this? Car. Car. Good job. <laughs> totally could be a typical response, right? What is this? Cup. Good job. That is a cup. What is this? Car. What is this? Car. Car. Good job. What is this? Ball. Good job. That is a ball. What is this? Car. Good job. That is a car. What is this? Beach. What is this? Ball. Ball. Good job. What is this? Cup. Good job. That is a cup. What is this? Car. Good job. That is a car. Good job. You finished it. Um, random rotation, yeah. yeah. Program says object, uh, um, <coughs> object ID receptive. Sit next to across from child. SD, therapist says touch. Reinforce the response and fade contour when appropriate. And they materials. Prompt level, least to most, past gesture, partial level, a physical prompt, whole physical prompt. Example, the therapist and child sit face, facing one another. Therapist says touch ball. If child correctly identifies them, Reinforce. If the child does not use use least to most prompting to guide the child to point to the correct item, then reinforce. Tokens only be given for independent responses. Verbal praise to be given for following through with prompting. The same procedure is used across all settings. Match the criteria the child will correctly identify items in the three or three the same way. Car. Catch the car. That's the car. Good. Perfect air correction procedure. Oh. We have three different items. Oh, okay, so okay. all the cups will go under one. All the cups. under oh. each one of these. So A it will be ball oh. or however you want it. B cup or car and C car. Oh. So then even though you have different one of these. Okay. Is this a gumball? Oh well, I forgot you to call We're 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 programming for generalization. Come on Montez. Touch ball. There you go, that's the ball. Blue cup. Good job. That's the blue cup. Good. So remember, right now you're just looking for object ID. You're not worried about discriminating. If you were doing a discrimination program and you were teaching um, specifically like colors, then you might do blue cup. But for this purpose, just do cup. Yep. Touch ball. 
Good job, Mr. Ball. Now, also remember, you want to rotate the items, okay. right? Switch it up every now and then. Good, and you would probably only want out three items. So just choose one ball, one cup, and one car. Put the others away. Yeah. <laughs> As they roll away from you. Touch car. Good job. Can I eat that gumball after? Um, how about like after everybody's done? Okay. I'll let you eat it. Although that means a lot of people are probably to touch that gumball. Don't talk about it. Sorry. Just think, just like Ruined it for you? Yeah. Touch cup. That's touching the cup good, so you would literally guide her to touch it. So the other thing you want to take into consideration too when you set up something like this is you might want to put out all three items in a line, but a little bit apart from each other. So the car is like four inches from the cup, and then the ball might be on the other side of the cup. But the cup's in the middle, so you have all three in line. Good. So that way it's easy for her, no matter what, to touch the car, the ball, or the cup. Objects aren't in front of each other, you know what I mean? You just make it more likely for her to be successful. Touch car. Car. That's car. That's car. Now rotate the items. Good. Touch ball. Good job, that's the ball. Good. <laughs> Touch. Cup. Touch. Cup. That's the cup. Good, guys. <laughs> And gaining attention and requesting. Procedure, sit next to or across from the child, mastery pointing gesture. SD, therapist waits for child to tap in order to gain attention. Reinforce the response and say the prompts when appropriate. Materials, preferred items, prompt bubbles. Excuse me, who took the sheet? You guys are on that bubble. Pause, gesture, partial, and full physical prompt. So the example, the therapist and the child sit or stand next to one another. Therapist plays with preferred item with back to child. Child taps therapist. Therapist turn and says, what do you want? Child points to the item or says, more. Therapist reinforces by giving item. If the child does not, guide the child to tap the therapist to gain attention. Say, what do you want? And then help the child either assign more or point to the item. Then reinforce by giving item. Tokens only be given for independent responses. Verbal phrase be given for following through with prompting. All right. So remember, this is a two-part program, right? She has to first tap you to get your attention, mm -hmm. and then you say, what do you want? And then she communicates in some way appropriately for the item, for the ball. So she either signs for it, she uses a gesture with the point, or she verbally says ball. Okay. All right? Any three of those will work. Okay. And then if she doesn't tap you, what do you what do? You do? Um, have her guide her. guide her to tap me, and mm -hmm. then I would say, what do you want? And then guide her to what the object is. Right, and then you would get yeah, the ball if you said it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And we just reposition. What do you want? There you go. Nice job. Awesome. Perfect. What do you want? Fantastic. Keep it up. And so when I run this program, typically I would do like a three second pause, like one, two, you know, okay. give him a little bit of time. Time because, to play, mm -hmm. play with it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, no, a three-second pause before, like when you have the item, 
Okay. Until you guide her to tap your your hand. Oh, okay. Or your arm. Gotcha. Yeah. This is okay. Music. <laughs> What do you want? Nice job. Oh, good. Shove your running. Ignore the distraction, please. What do you want? Nice job. Oh, really? <laughs> what, would you, what do you want? Ball. Fantastic! Perfect. <laughs> Alright, you guys rock. Alright, so ready? Yeah. Uh, program. Gross motor imitation. Procedures. Whoa. And then there was Sit, one. stand, and there was Next to or across from child, as the therapist says, do this, and follows by physically modeling motor movement. Reinforce the response and fade prompts when appropriate. Materials. Table. Clap hands. Yeah. Shrug shoulders. Prompt levels. Least to most. Pause. Partial physical prompt. Full physical prompt. Oh, yeah, you picked that because I was confused when it was the first one. Sorry. Um, the therapist and child sit or stand facing one another. another. Therapist says, do this, followed by modeling a motor movement. If child imitates, reinforce. If the child does not imitate, therapist will provide the SD again. Guide child to imitate, the, then reinforce. Token only to be given for independent responses. Verbal praise to be given for following through with prompt. The same procedures used across all settings in people. The child will imitate a motor movement independently over three consecutive days. So your set list is what? What are your targets? Tap table, clap hands, shrug shoulders. Okay. All right. Tap table. Good nope. job. So remember, you just did a one-step direction, right? Uh -huh. You gave him a direction. What's the SD? What does it say? Therapist says. Oh, I did again. That's okay. All right. Do this. Good job. That's doing that. Awesome. Yeah. Because okay. there are programs that are one step directions or two step directions. So you would say clap hands or touch table or come here or stand up, right? And that's following directions. But this is different. This is literally just imitation. So they should just be following whatever you do for do this. Okay. Do this. Good job. That's clapping hands. So do I still nope. say that's... Nope. You nope. just say, just, good job, that's good doing job. this. Okay. Yep. Do this. So how do so I... So then I would say, do this. Okay. That's doing that. Okay. I know it's awkward. Right. But literally, you do. You have to reprompt that. Or okay. if it was, do this, do this. Yeah, and you would guide him to do the clock one. Do this. Good job, that's doing this. Do this. Do this. Good, Good job. Right, and I like how you reprompt it again with the model, and then you literally went to go guide him to help him do it. Perfect. Do this. Good job, that's doing this. He's like, I really just don't want you to make me shrug my shoulders again. <laughs> Do this. Do this. Good job. That's doing this. Perfect. Do this. Good job. That's doing this. Do this. Good job. That's doing this. Do this. You want to read the program? Program. Eye contact. Response to name. Procedure. Sit next to or across from child. SD. Therapist says student's name. Prompt levels. Least the most. Pause. Gesture. Partially physical prompt. Full physical prompt. Example. 
The therapist and child sit facing one another. The therapist sends Gadel and waits for student to make eye contact and responds to him with a name. When Gadel makes eye contact with the therapist, the therapist should immediately provide a verbal praise in the form of hi with an exciting tone and provide token. Do not say something like nice looking in response to making eye contact. In a correction procedure, if after saying the individual's name, the individual does not make eye contact, use the least to most of prompting to have the individual make eye contact and give them verbal praise. The same procedure is used across all settings in mastery criteria. The child will make eye contact in response to name independently over three consecutive days. All right. So Montez really enjoys those little animals over there. So what I might do to get her to make eye contact with me for the error correction procedure is I might say, all right, my turn with the stuffed animals. And I'm going to hold on to them for a little while. Oh, no. I mean, look, she's making <laughs> eye contact with me already, right? So Montez, good. And, you know, she looks at me. I give him back. But okay, this time, don't make eye contact with me, Montez. <laughs> Montez, she makes eye contact with me, and I give it back. Okay. So you can use that eye gaze shift to make her eyes kind of make contact with yours, come across them, and then you immediately provide reinforcement in the form of what she wants. Trying to get the puppets? Okay. No, Before I'm we start. playing with them. Before we start. Montez. Montez. Good, and then give it, give it, give it to her. Good. Cause, right, because that's your reinforcement. You made eye contact with me, so you can give it back. And that's my turn to play. Montez. Good. Uh, Good, and you could give her the item if she looks. But, you know, you could also just give her, her like, hey, how are you? Or give her a token. But this one's tough because, you know, you do have to give some sort of reinforcement for me. Can I play? I'm so good, Sherry. Hey, Montez. How you doing today? Good job. And give her the item. So remember, it's just eye contact in response to name. So it's not like a response to greeting. So you just say, Montez. Okay. That's it. Can I play? Please? <laughs> Montez. Perfect. Time for a break. Montez. Montez. Good. Good. All right, guys. Awesome work. I think you guys have a hang of this. How do you feel? Good. Good. Everyone. I wish I had a place to apply it. I'm not yet there yet on my day job, so yeah. it's going to be hard. I know it would be nice, right, it if you would. could literally, like, tomorrow start and you could implement the teaching procedures and the error correction procedures and read some mm -hmm. more program sheets. Um, but the wonderful part mm -hmm. is, is that, you know, after this is over, when school starts up again, and Johnny and I will be offering supervision, and so, you know, we'll be meeting a few – I think the way that it's going to work out is we're going to offer a few different meeting times per month um, so that we can continue kind of a group supervision piece where you come to us with questions, we discuss things, we can go through program books, you know, that you have questions on specific programs, we can remodel, work with you. Um, but then also part of um, going supervision is that we do do some in-place meetings too. So that one-on-one, -on -one. so if you have any specific questions about running programs, you know, in your spot, it's, it's a perfect advantage, yeah. Now, so if we work great. with the BCBA at the school, mm -hmm. then we could use them for our time? I think so, yeah. Um, they still have to sign off, though. You'll see that once you, you know, 
finish the application process and everything is good to go and you pass the exam and you are a registered behavioral technician, then you have to keep with the supervisor a log. Um, where they literally check off, okay, this individual worked 30 hours this month. Um, it's 5% of your work needs to be supervised. So say if you work 30 hours, and I think you technically need, like, I think it works out to um, six hours. If you work 30 hours a week. How much has to be supervised? 5%. That was three hours a month. Yeah. So 5% would be one. Yeah. 0.5 hours. 1.5 right. hours per week. Yeah. So then that works out to how many per month? 1.5. Uh, 30 hours a week is 12. Per month. Yeah. Yeah. So six hours per month. But again, so not all of that has to be direct in person. Like we were saying, I think we're going to try and do at least a half hour in person for each of you in your setting. And then the other, you know, because everybody's going to meet a certain night, everybody's working 30 hours a week. Um, so we'll just offer some group times, you come, and then you fulfill your requirements that way. Does that make sense? And then if you want additional supervision, you're more than welcome. You know, more questions and that sort of thing. So I think it'll it'll be a nice way um, to keep up with. Yeah, yeah. What if your student isn't, like, doesn't have this program? Mm -hmm. Do you still need supervision as far as, like, my student just a regular, he just has behavioral problems. He, he's smarter than a lot of kids in the school. He yeah. Just, yeah, so it's a great question. So you're not going to be working on, like you're saying, direct instruction yeah, programs, right? Anything. But there are a ton of things that you're learning here that you can still apply. Okay. And so whatever it is that's going to be applicable to you and most beneficial mm -hmm. is, you know, what you might come to us and say, hey, you know, I have questions on this, or when we come to schedule a time to meet with you, you say, hey, you know, I have a question about this behavior that's happening at a certain time. Do you mind trying to come in right around then to, you know, kind of give me some feedback on some other ways that we can address it, or, you know, maybe we'll talk about other ways to assess this behavior, data collection, that sort of thing. So um, it's going to be really individualized, which is nice. How does that work for a school system where CVH is not involved if we work for a school system? Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> it depends because you're going to you're going to be working through CVH in some form or fashion, right? Mm -hmm. So whatever form or fashion you're working with That's for us. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Because you're right, not all settings are going to be open to having us come in. Um, and But this really is, this credentialing process is really for you. Um, so ideally, would we like to, you know, stay within our own network? Yeah. But um, I don't think it has to be, <coughs> okay. you know. So I think that's something that we can talk about. Right. Yeah. Um, any questions, comments, or concerns about the programs we ran tonight? No, ma'am. No? All right. You guys all, all did a wonderful job. I'm impressed. So thank you. So thank you. Okay. All right. So we're going to do A as fireman. Okay, so the program is expressive. Okay. I'm trying to have them identify people and such, and oh my god. So A is going to be firefighter. Firefighter. Okay. And then B is going to be. I was just going to go in order, policeman, and then cool. switch it up. <laughs> okay. So be a policeman. And see doc doctor, right? Yeah. Yep. Just making sure I have the right identification of people. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. This is expressive. So. Good. So remember, you want to start off by reading the objective. This one, Charlotte, will identify in pictures and label for community helpers i.e. teacher, firefighter, cashier, doctor, and then when shown their picture and asked who is it, okay? Materials, pictures of each target item, 
Ta-da! And implementation procedure. Do you want to read it out loud? Teaching phase. Show Charlotte a picture of the location and give SD, who is this? Provide immediate prompts so that the errorless teaching occurs. Systematically fade the prompts given using the prompting hierarchy until three to four consecutive responses are independently given. Testing phase. Show, show Charlotte a picture of the location and give the SD, who is this? Use, sequen use the sequence of steps below based upon the response given. Good. So you don't have to worry about the rest, remember? Okay. Just use least to most. And error correction procedure is what? Um, if she does the wrong one, try to grab her hand before pointing. Well, well not so grab, but like... Remember, is this expressive or is this receptive? Expressive. Good. So are you going to present all three at once or just one? All three. One. Oh, wait, no. One. Totally. Sorry. That's okay. I'm nope. thinking. That's good. <laughs> yep, so you're going to present one card, right? And then what's your SD? What's the prompt you're giving? Who is this? Who is this? Good. So she should verbally, what's the response you're looking for? Fireman. Perfect. Say fireman. What's your error correction procedure if she, if she says it incorrectly or if she doesn't say anything at all? I would ask the question again and then give the answer. Perfect. Really fast, right? So she doesn't have the opportunity. So Or if you hear her pronouncing it wrong or starts to pronounce, like, let's say, I, who is it? And she starts to say, Puh, I would, like, jump in and say, fireman. Exactly. Because that's what I do with my kid at work, just making sure mm -hmm. that. Nope. So, Perfect. <laughs> yep. So do you want me to model it for you? Yeah. The air correction procedure. <laughs> All right. Sorry. So, you ready? Sorry. No, you're fine. <laughs> ready? So I'm going to just don't say anything at all when I ask you. Yeah. Who's this? Who's this fireman? <laughs> and you say fireman. Fireman. Oh. Good. It's fireman. So you want them to respond at the second point when you point out that it's what it is. Like you say fireman and I'm supposed mm -hmm. to repeat. Right. Okay. Now, I want you to accidentally label it something else. You ready? Say policeman when I present it. Who's this? Policeman. Who's this? Fireman. 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 Good, it is a fireman. Hmm. Who's this? <laughs> Who's this? Doctor. <laughs> Doctor. Doctor. Good. I know it's a little bit creepy, but that's <laughs> isn't it? Okay? But so did you see I reprompted and yeah. then I gave you the verbal model and then my hope is that you imitate me. Okay. Now, you need, obviously, as a prerequisite to running this program, imitation skills, right? Because if my learner doesn't imitate, then there's no point in doing this. Mm -hmm. So, imitation is key. <laughs> All right. And they learn fast, trust me. That's right. <laughs> All right, ladies, go to work. Oh, oh boy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to be a student or you want to be, me to be a teacher? Do the teacher first and then I'll just look. So about half by five, they'll swap. Yep. Okay. So do one at a time. Yeah. She put it out of order on me. Oh. <laughs> okay. Ready? Who is this? Fireman. Nice job. Who's this? Policeman. Good job! <laughs> Disregard my tone. <laughs> Who's this? Police. I'm sorry. <laughs> Who is this? Doctor. Doctor. Nice job. What All right. That be considered. That'd be a minus because okay. it was my first initial response. Oh my god. I'll do excuse me. All right. And that'd be. Who's this? Policeman. Who is this? Policeman. Nice job. Who's this? Doctor. Doctor. Nice job. <laughs> Alright, that's what Okay. Okay. Who's this? Fireman. Good fireman. Okay. Who's this? Who's this? Policeman. Policeman. Good policeman. <laughs> Who's this? Doctor? Good doctor. I did that backwards, but that's okay. 
Okay. Who's this? Policeman? Okay, what am I supposed so, to do? So, as I started saying policeman, if you can catch it. It's fireman. Who is it? Oh, fireman. Okay. So, we'll do it again. No worries. Okay. Who's this? Uh, fireman. This is fireman. Fireman. Right? Yep. So, you say, who is it? Fireman. Oh, I'm supposed to do Because you want the SD to be connected with the answer. But then how, well, how would you, okay, so you're saying policeman. Mm -hmm. I say, and this is, say, or who is this? Who is this? You want to leave In the, the midst of that. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Scratch, try again. Who's this? Policeman. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Okay, ready? One more time. Okay. Who's this? Policeman. <laughs> Just too fast. <laughs> they say it fast, and that's why you have to catch them. Okay. I can't, though. My Ready? Struggles. You go. Who is this? Police. Who is it? Fireman. Okay. Fireman. Nice job. That's, so, that's hard, though. Because I feel like if they already say it, then you're just kind of like you gotta stuck. Chalk, you got to chalk them, and it takes time to practice, trust me. <laughs> Trust me. Last one. One more. Mm -hmm. Who's this? Doctor. Good doctor. You, air, like the airless teaching, it takes a while to pick up on. Like I had a hard time with like one of the students I worked with for a while. I was like, wait, hold on. What do you mean? Like just chop it? Like what do you yeah. mean? And then the more I did, I was like, oh, so like you move with their finger. Or you actually like you yeah. physically kind of do stuff. Mm -hmm. well, and now with the student I work with, now, he starts like, counting and starts saying the wrong number. Like I like jump on him and. Yeah. Go forth. <laughs> it okay. takes time and practice. <laughs> so you guys are good? Yeah. I'm all set. All right. So, you want to read the program again? Okay. Program. Picture ID. Expressive. Procedure. Sit next to or across from child. SD. Therapist holds up a picture and says, tell me what it is. Reinforce response and fade prompts when appropriate. Materials not needed. Wait, we do have materials. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Car, cup, and ball. Prop levels. Verbal pause, partial verbal, full verbal. Example, the therapist and child sit facing one another. There's, therapist holds up a picture and says, tell me what it is. If child correctly identifies item, reinforce. If the child does not, use least to most verbal prompting, then reinforce. Tokens only to be given for independent responses. Verbal praise to be given for following through with prompting. The same procedure is used across all settings and people. Mastery criteria. The child will correctly identify items independently over three consecutive days. Cool. And you're using your um, random rotation? Tracking sheet, right? Yes. And so, what stimuli do you have for the first set? Ball, cup, or car. Awesome. So stimuli A is ball, stimuli B is cup, and C is car. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Was, was, am I supposed to go or keep looking, shuffling through it? Shuffle through, switch it out. Okay. Yep. But you're just going to make sure you do ball first, because that's A, and then your second one is B, cup, okay. and then C, car. Okay. What is this? Ball. Good job. What is this? Hmm. What is this? Cup. Cup. Good job. Perfect air correction procedure. What is this? Boom. What is this? Car. Car. Good job. <laughs> totally could be a typical response, right? What is this? Cup. Good job. That is a cup.
What is this? What is this? Car. Car. Good job. What is this? Ball. Good job. That is a ball. What is this? Car. Good job. That is a car. What is this? Beach. What is this? Ball. Good job. What is this? Good job. That is a cup. What is this? Car. Good job. That is a car. Good job. You finished it. Um, random rotation, yeah. yeah. Program says object, uh, um, <clears throat> object ID receptive. Sit next to or across from child. SD therapist says touch. Reinforce the response and fade prompts when appropriate. And name materials. Prompt level. Least to most. Past gesture. Partial A clinical prompt. Pro prompt. Example. The therapist and child sit face, facing one another. Therapist says touch ball. If child correctly identifies them, reinforce. If the child does not use use least to most prompting to guide the child to point to the correct item, then reinforce. Tokens only be given for independent responses. Verbal praise to be given for following through with prompting. The same procedure is used across all settings. Match the criteria of the child will correctly identify items in the three or three same things. Car. Catch car. That's the car. Good. Perfect air correction procedure. Oh. You have three different items. Oh, okay, so okay. all the cups will go under one. All the cups. under each one of these. So A it will be ball for however you want it. B cup or car and C car. So then even though you have different one of these. Is this a gumball? Oh one I forgot she did We're 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 programming for generalization. Come on Montez. Touch ball. Blue cup. Good job. That's the blue cup. Good. So remember, right now you're just looking for object ID. You're not worried about discriminating. If you were doing a discrimination program and you were teaching um, specifically like colors, then you might do blue cup. But for this purpose, just do cup. Okay. Yep. Um, touch ball. Good job. That's the ball. Now, also remember, you want to rotate the items, okay. right? Switch it up every now and then. Good. And you would probably only want out three items. So just choose one ball, one cup, and one car. Put the others away. Yeah. <laughs> As they roll away from you. Touch car. Good job. Can I eat that gumball after? Um... How about like after everybody's done? Okay. I'll let you eat it. Although that means a lot of people will probably touch that gumball. Don't talk about it. Sorry. Just think, just like Ruined it for you? Yeah. Right. Touch cup. Cup. That's touching the cup good. So you would literally guide her to touch it. So the other thing you want to take into consideration too when you set up something like this is you might want to put out all three items in a line but a little bit apart from each other so the car is like four inches from the cup 
and then the ball might be on the other side of the cup but the cups in the middle so you have all three in line good so that way it's easy for her no matter what to touch the car the ball or the cup objects aren't in front of each other you know what I mean you just make it more likely for her to be successful touch car Car. That's car. That's car. Now rotate the items. Good. Touch. Ball. Good job. That's the ball. Good. <laughs> Touch. Cup. Good cast. And gaining attention and requesting. Procedure, sit next to or across from the child, mastery avoiding gesture. SD, therapist waits for child to tap in order to gain attention. Reinforce the response and theta prompts when appropriate. Materials, preferred items. Prompt level. Excuse me. Who took these to most? You guys are on that phone. Pause, gesture, partial, and full physical prompt. So the example. The therapist and the child sit or stand next to one another. Therapist plays with preferred item with back to child. Child taps therapist. Therapist turn and says, what do you want? Child points to the item or says, more. Therapist reinforces by giving item. If the child does not, Guide the child to tap the therapist to gain attention, say, what do you want? And then help the child either assign more or point to the item, then reinforce by giving item. Tokens only be given for independent responses. The verbal phrase be given for following through with prompting. All right. So remember, this is a two-part program right? She has to first tap you to get your attention mm -hmm. and then you say what do you want and then she communicates in some way appropriately for the item, for the ball. So she either signs for it, she uses a gesture with the point, or she verbally says ball. Okay. All right? Any three of those will work. Partial. Okay. And then if she doesn't tap you, what do you, what do, you do? Um, have her Guide her. guide her to tap me, and mm -hmm. then I would say, what do you want, and then guide her to what the object is. Right, and then you would, yeah, the ball, she said it. Yeah. Good. Okay. <laughs> what do you want? There you go. Nice job. Awesome. Perfect. What do you want? Fantastic! <laughs> Keep it up! And so when I run this program, typically I would do like a three second pause. Like one, two, three. You know, okay. give them a little bit of time. Time to sleep. Mm -hmm. I'll play a bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, no, like a three second pause before, like when you have the item, okay. until you guide her to tap your, your hand. Oh, okay. Or your arm. Gotcha. Yeah. This is okay. This is okay. <laughs> What do you want? Nice job. Oh, oh, oh. good. Shove your pretty. Hi, how are you? Ignore the distraction, please. What do you want? Oh. Nice job. Okay. Awesome, guys. Oh, really? <laughs> What, what do you want? Oh. Fantastic! Oh. Perfect. <laughs> Alright, you guys rock. Alright, so ready? Yeah. Uh, program Gross Motor Imitation Procedures. Whoa. And then there was Sit, it. stand, and there was. 
next to or across from the child. As the therapist says, do this, and follows by physically modeling motor movement. Reinforce the response and fade prompts when appropriate. Materials. Table, clap hands, and shrug shoulders. Prompt levels, least to most, pause, partial physical prompt, full physical prompt. Oh, yeah, you picked that because I was confused when it was the first one. Sorry. Um, the therapist and child sit or stand facing one another. another. Therapist says, do this, followed by modeling a motor movement. If child imitates, reinforce. If the child does not imitate, therapist will provide the SD again. Guide child to imitate, the, then reinforce. Token only to be given for independent responses. Verbal praise to be given for following through with prompt. The same procedure is used across all settings and people. The child will imitate a motor movement independently over three consecutive days. Beautiful. So your set list is what? What are your targets? Tap table, clap hands, shrug shoulders. Okay. All right. Tap table. Good nope. job. So remember, you just did a one-step direction, right? Uh -huh. You gave him a direction. What's the SD? What does it say? Therapist says. Oh, I did it again. That's okay. All right. Do this. Good job. That's doing that. Awesome. Yeah. Because there are programs that are one-step directions or two-step directions. So you would say clap hands or touch table or come here or stand up, right? And that's following directions. But this is different. This is literally just imitation. So they should just be following whatever you do for do this. Okay. Do this. Good job. That's clapping hands. So do I still nope. say that's... No, nope. you nope. just say just good job. That's good doing job. this. Okay. Yep. Do this. So how do I? So then I would say, do this. Okay. That's doing that. Okay. I know it's awkward. Right. But literally, you do. You have to reprompt that. Or okay. if it was, do this. Do this. Yeah, and you would guide him to do the clock okay. one. Do this. Good job. That's doing this. Do this. Do this. Good. Good job. Right, and I like how you reprompted again with the model, and then you literally went to go guide him and help him do it. Perfect. Do this. Good job. That's doing this. He's like, I really just don't want you to make me shrug my shoulders again. <laughs> do this. Do this. Good job. That's doing this. Perfect. Do this. Good job. That's doing this. Do this. Good job. That's doing this. Do this. Program. program, eye contact, response to name, procedure, right. sit next to or across from child, SD, therapist says, student's name, prompt levels, least to most, pause, gesture, partial physical prompt, full physical prompt. Example, the therapist and child sit facing one another. Therapist says, Gail, and waits for student to make eye contact in response to him or name. When Gail makes eye contact with the therapist, the therapist should immediately provide a verbal praise in the form of hi with an exciting tone and provide token. Do not say something like nice looking in response to making eye contact. There were correction procedure. If after saying the individual's name, the individual does not make eye contact, use the least to most of prompting to have the individual make eye contact and give them verbal praise. The same procedure is used across all settings and Mastery criteria, the child will make eye contact and response to name independently over three consecutive days. Alright, so Montez really enjoys those little animals over there. So what I might do to get her to make eye contact with me for the error correction procedure is I might say, alright, my turn with the stuffed animals. I'm going to hold on to them for a little while. Oh no. I mean, look, she's making <laughs> eye contact with me already, right? Ah, animals, animals, animals. <laughs> so Montez, come on, 
<laughs> then, you know, she looks at me, I give him back. But, okay, this time, don't make eye contact with me. Montez. <laughs> Montez. She makes eye contact with me, and I give it back. Okay? So you can use that eye gaze shift to make her eyes kind of make contact with yours, come across them, and then you immediately provide reinforcement in the form of what she wants. Okay. Trying to get the puppies. No, I'm playing with it. Before we start. Montez. Montez. Good, and then give it, give it, give it to her. Good. Because, right, because that's your reinforcement. You made eye contact with you, so you can give it back. And that's my turn to play. Montez. Good, and you could give her the item if she looks. But, you know, you could also just give her, like, hey, how are you? Or give her a token. But this one's tough because, you know, you do have to give some sort of reinforcement for me. Can I play? So good, Sherry. Hey, Montez. How you doing today? Good job. Give her the item. Okay. So remember, it's just eye contact in response to name, so it's not like a response to greeting. So you just say, Montez. Okay. That's it. Can I play? Please? <laughs> Montez. Perfect. Time for a break. Montez. Montez. Good. Good. All right, guys. Awesome work. I think you guys have a hang of this. How do you feel? Good. Good? Everyone? I wish I had a place to apply it. I'm not there yet on my day job, so yeah. it's going to be hard. It's I know it would be nice, right, it if you would. could literally, like, tomorrow start and you could implement the teaching procedures and the error correction procedures and read some yes. more program sheets. Um, but the wonderful part <laughs> is, is that, you know, after this is over, when school starts up again, and Johnny and I will be offering supervision, and so, you know, we'll be meeting a few... I think the way that it's going to work out is we're going to offer a few different meeting times per month um, so that we can continue kind of a group supervision piece where you come to us with questions, we discuss things, we can go through program books, you know, that you have questions on specific programs, we can remodel, work with you, um, but then also part of um, going supervision is that we do do some in-place meetings too. So that one-on-one, -on -one. so if you have any specific questions about running programs, you know, in your spot, it's, it's the perfect advantage, yeah. Now, so if we work great. with the BCBA at the school, mm -hmm. then we could use them for our time? I think so, yeah. Um, they still have to sign off, though. You'll see that once you, you know, finish the application process and everything is good to go and you pass the exam and you are a registered behavioral technician, then you have to keep with the supervisor a log um, where they literally check off, okay, this individual worked 30 hours this month. Um, it's 5% of your work needs to be supervised. So say if you work 30 hours and I think you technically need like, I think it works out to um, six hours. If you work no. 30 hours a week. How much has to be five percent. Three hours a month. So five percent would be one, one and a half. Point five hours. Right? One point five hours per week. Yeah. So then that works out to how many per month? One point five. Uh, Thirty hours a week is twelve. Three, so six per month. Yeah. yeah. So six hours per month. But again, so not all of that has to be direct in person. Like we were saying, I think we're going to try and do at least a half hour in person for each of you in your setting. And then the other, you know, because everybody's going to meet a certain night, everybody's working 30 hours a week. Um, so we'll just mm -hmm. offer some group times. You come and then you fulfill your requirements that way. Does that make sense?
And then if you want additional supervision, you're more than welcome. You know, more questions and that sort of thing. So I think it'll it'll be a nice way um, to keep up with. I have a question. Yeah. What if your student isn't like doesn't have this program? Mm -hmm. You still need supervision as far as like my student just a regular. He just has behavioral problems. He he's smarter than a lot of kids in the school. He yeah. Just, yeah, so it's a great question. So you're not going to be working on, like you're saying, direct instruction no, programs, right? But there are a ton of things that you're learning here that you can still apply. Okay. And so whatever it is that's going to be applicable to you and most beneficial mm -hmm. is, you know, what you might come to us and say, hey, you know, I have questions on this. Or when we come to schedule a time to meet with you, you say, hey, you know, I have a question about this behavior that's happening at a certain time. Do you mind trying to come in right around then to, you know, kind of give me some feedback on some other ways that we can address it? Or, you know, maybe we'll talk about other ways to assess this behavior, data collection, that sort of thing. So okay. um, it's going to be really individualized, which is nice. How does that work for a school system where CDH is not involved if it works for a school system? Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> it depends because you're gonna you're gonna be working through CBH in some form or fashion, right? Mm -hmm. So whatever form or fashion you're working with That's for us, <laughs> exactly. Yep, because you're right. Not all settings are gonna be open to having us come in, um, and but this really is this credentialing process is really for you. Um, so ideally, would we like to, you know, stay within our own network? Yeah, but um, I don't think it has to be, <coughs> okay. you know. So I think that's something that we can talk about. All right. Yeah. Um, any questions, comments, or concerns about the programs we ran tonight? No, ma'am. No. All right. You, you guys all, all did a wonderful job. Oh, I'm impressed. So thank you. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Nick. Thank you.